But before all of that, a lady who until very recently had never seen the end of this show on Mondays and Wednesdays, just as I never saw the start of hers. I think she's probably got the best of the deal. Mind you, she's been busy, or busybodying, on Mondays and Wednesdays for many more years than I have here. In fact, the question's being asked, how will Coronation Street survive without its favourite daughter, Hilda Ogden? Please welcome the lady who created her, making a rare appearance without the rollers, the TV Times Actress of the Year, ladies and gentlemen, Jean Alexander. <laughs> We put the ducks up the wall and all to <laughs> try to make you feel at home. Although the audience says the middle one should have its head it's down a little yes. bit. We, all we, the sex and house die. Yeah, hang on. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I suppose they'll say that was rehearsed. <laughs> but it wasn't. Now, anyway, you've decided to hang up the pinny and the curlers That's right. after 24 years. 23 and a half, actually. Yeah. Mm. But who's counting? Well, we all are, because, and, and I'm sure most of the public are, because they don't want you to go. Why did you decide to leave? Well, I've spent over half my working life in the street, on the street. No, I better not say that. <laughs> <laughs> over half my working life yeah. in Coronation Street, and I thought it was time for a change. Of course, the... the press dropped me in it by saying I was retiring, so I've had uh, about... 200 retirement cards, which makes me feel about 197. And um, I'd like to thank everybody for them, incidentally, because I just can't answer all the letters that read far too many. Yes, which just shows you the kind of affection in which you are held by the British public. Was it, it must have been a very difficult decision to leave the street. Yes, it was in a way, because it's, it changes your way of life. You know, when you've been scratching around waiting for the next job for most of your life, yeah. um, it was the only sort of secure job in the business, really. It yeah. certainly gave us all a sense of security. You never worried about the, the great myth, or perhaps shibboleth, of, of typecasting? Not really, because I spent uh, about 11 years in Weekly Rep, which yeah. is doing a different play every week in the theatre. And you know how tough acting can be after right. that, don't you? Absolutely. So um, I have done other things and hope to do them again. Do you, do you miss it? I mean, it's perhaps a little too soon to ask you that. Do you miss the street? I'm having a ball, actually, Terry, yeah. because it's so marvellous not to have to get up at the crack of dawn and go and stand on a drafty station platform and wait for the train and get home late in the dark and in the yeah. winter. And, you know, I got tired of that. It's got very hard work. It was, What yes. sort of schedule did you work to on the street? Well, we start on Monday. We started on Monday. <laughs> Can't get used to it. <laughs> <laughs> and we did outside filming, location filming on Monday morning. And then we started rehearsals Monday afternoon. And rehearsed Tuesday and Wednesday. And then we were recording Thursday and Friday. That was two episodes a week. So it was pretty fast. And you could still be called in on a Saturday oh, if yes. things didn't work yes. all that well. Yes, Saturday or Sunday occasionally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can we take you back to... I'm not sure of the year. It was about 1961, was it, when you made your very first entrance? Or 64. 64. Mm. Mm. Yes. It started about 61. You joined about three I or four years later. Yes, yeah. yes. Right. yes. Well, this was when you made your very first entrance. Are you joking? Yeah, <laughs> yes. The very first entrance of the Ogdens uh, of number 13, Coronation Street. Are you trying to stir up trouble? Whack. Yes, I am. Any objections there, kid? <laughs> yes. 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 Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, yes, mate, because it was me that nearly crippled your wife just now. I'm like that, you see. I'm very rough on the outside, but inside I've got a heart of gold, mate. What are you going to have? Well, uh, gin and bitter lemon for me, love. Well, in that case, a double scotch. Eh? The name's Hilda Ogden. Uh, that's our Frieda. Eh? Frieda? Well, Frieda and I have met before. You were there. You, that was your first entrance without the curlers. You and Bernard Ewins, the late right. Bernard Ewins, yes. as, as Stan. 
Now, Hilda grew into one of the great, perhaps, triumvirate of female characters. There was, there was uh, Pat Phoenix, there was Ina Sharples, and there was you, and they're all gone now. Did you, did you think that you'd be playing the part for so long when you went, walked into that? No, had no idea, because we went in after three and a half years the show had been running, and uh, went in in June, 64, and we just thought we might be still there at Christmas, and if we got six months, that would be very good, you know, for yeah. a long-running job. Never now, thought we'd be there for 23 years. Well, as I say, Hilda appeared there with, rather as, as you look now, quite, <laughs> quite glamorous and, and uh, well, you know, youthful and without any curlers in the hair or anything. Tatty head. Yeah. Did, um, who determined that Hilda would turn into the kind of character that she did? I mean, did you play a part in that? No, not really. Well, well I, I suppose in a way, because the character was originally written as a rather stereotyped character, as Stan was, you know, the big fat man and lazy husband and little nagging wife. Yeah. Well, after a few weeks, we thought this was going to get a bit boring, so we started playing against the script and same words, but um, yeah. trying to give them a bit more character, you know, rounding it out a bit. And when you when you went out to hang up the washing that uh, time, and you burst into song. Was that was that, that something was, you decided to do off your own back? Well, that was the first singing because in the script it just said Hilda pegging out the washing and singing. So I started singing. Um, Can't I love <laughs> And they all Give us fell a whole sing a bit more. <laughs> <laughs> they all <laughs> fell about and screamed with mirth. So every few weeks they would start writing in Hilda's singing, you see, and I had to pick the songs myself to suit the occasion. But then they started writing too many, so I said, I'm not doing too many. It spoils the game. Is that the way you sing when you're at home? Or? Well, no, I can't sing, you see. I have no ear at all. I can cod it up for a while but when necessary, but I can't really, because when I was a child, I've grown up with a complex about singing because my brother has a very musical ear. And uh, if I sang as a child, he used to take me by the shoulders and shake me and say, Stop her, Mum, stop her, stop her. Let's <laughs> <laughs> sing a little bit of that again. Okay. It's gonna swim and bird's gonna fly. It's gonna swim and bird's gonna fly. I gotta look for <laughs> I did Liverpool as a chucking out time, boys. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, um, did you have to wear curlers throughout in your own mm. hair? Yes, yes, but that was my idea because it's a very good disguise, you see. It, um, yeah. Do you get recognised in the street without the curlers? Mm, I do now, yes, because I think I've been seen a bit too often as me. Yeah. So, uh, but early on, people didn't quite know whether it was me or not, and I think they hesitated to say, was it, in case it wasn't, and they wouldn't, I was insulted. Yeah, yeah. Because you would be, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Did you? Do you like Hilda? I mean, would, would you pick Hilda as a companion? Um, well, for some things, perhaps, <laughs> but I think she'd drive me crackers if she lived next door. <laughs> well, now, Stan and Hilda, the Ogdens were like fish and chips. They were part of, mm. of the warp and woof of British life. And when, Stan, when Bernard Ewins died, it must have been very hard for you to carry on. Yes, it, it was, because, um, as I say, we never met until we met in the street. And uh, we never heard of each other. But we got on so well, we worked the same way. And we used to sit in the rehearsal room and play Scrabble and rehearse our lines at the same time. He was a great character, was Bernard. Yeah. Missed him a lot. Now, Hilda had given millions a lot of pleasure. What, what sort of memories do you... Are there any particular memories you treasure? Well, I can't... I, as I say, once we've finished with the show on Friday, I can't remember what I did by Saturday. You know, you, it's completely yeah. wiped out. You're ready to start the next week. But there's one particular memory which was brought about by being in the street, and that was meeting Her Majesty the Queen, which was absolutely marvellous, because in 1977, her jubilee year, they put on a show at the Palace Theatre in Manchester with northern artists, the Halle and people like that. And we did a Coronation Street sketch. And it, I was terrified because I hadn't been on a stage since 1960. And I was in Jersey at the time on holiday and I had to fly back on the Sunday having learnt this 12 minute sketch. And I was on all the time, other people just came and went. So I was the sort of anchor man for the whole thing. And I had three run-throughs of it with the rest of the cast on Monday morning. And then we did it at about nine o'clock at night in the theatre. And I was terrified, absolutely terrified. But all went well, and uh, we were presented to Her Majesty afterwards, which was really exciting. Well, I mean, obviously nobody's re irreplaceable in, in television Not or anything all. else. But it's hard to imagine the street without you. 
Well, I don't know. It'll go on just the same. Well, of course it will, yeah, but quite and big, quite the same. Will you watch it? Oh, yes. Feast? Yes, it's more interesting now because I don't know what's going to happen. Are you, do, you, do you watch other soap opera? Yes, some, yes, yes. You don't like the description of soap opera for it, do you? Not really, no, no. Because yeah. they don't always advertise soap in the middle. No. Yeah. <laughs> what, what do you watch? What do you like? I like Emmerdale Farm. Yeah. I believe they live there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what, about, uh, what about EastEnders? I see it occasionally, but normally it was on the wrong time for me. I was usually coming home on the train when it yeah. was on. Do you like EastEnders? Really? Sorry. <laughs> because they're the two biggest programmes in Britain, obviously, yes. it's imagined that there's a, a lot of rivalry to, between well, Coronation what? Street cast and EastEnders cast, do you think? Th there, is? there isn't really. No, again, I think that's press talk. You know, they're trying to stir up a big fight between the two of us. Yeah. We, we don't mind. They've got their viewers, we've got ours. Yeah. So it's all... There's room for both of us, I think. Now that you've decided to, to, to give the show a rest, but you're not retiring, okay. would, you, would you go back to it? If I'm asked, I, I would quite like to go back for the occasional visit, but just for a week or two weeks, something like because that. Because Hilda hasn't gone far. Well, where has she gone to? Well, this is awful, because they, they said in the script she'd gone to a place in Derbyshire, which is a real village. And after I left, the village is snowed under with people going to asking where Hilda often <laughs> lives. Can you believe? <laughs> but you, know, you must, that, that is the way of people. I mean, they do think... They did think Hilda was a real person. They yes, still do. Yes, but I mean, it is only a play after all. You know, we don't, we don't live there. But the whole point is to create the illusion of reality. Well, yes, and it's nice mm. that um, it's nice that it works. Mm. I think. Well, I'm delighted that you chose this program to come and, and make perhaps not your valedictory speech because you're going to be around. You're going to do a lot of theatre. I hope. I'd like do. to do some <clears> plays <throat> on television. I think. I, I don't want to go to theatre again, no. Too scared yeah. to do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's nice to be able to say, "Stop, we'll do that again," isn't it? Mm, it yeah, is. You can't on this program. No, no. But I'm going to ask you. I'm going to ask you to stop for just a moment, but stay with us, ladies and gentlemen. Jean Alexander.